God gets the glory. God gets the glory. And when you start giving it to God, guess what you just start doing? You start taking it from the enemy. <laughs> when you start giving it to God, you just start taking it from the devil. When you start giving it to God, you just start taking it from the devil. All the things that he stole from you, guess what? You're getting it back. You're taking it back. And you're giving God the glory. That, that, that's why she said it's mine. It's mine because you took it back. It's mine. You better learn how to speak that into the atmosphere. It's mine. It's, listen, you're telling the devil it's mine. It's mine. The devil's not going to have no victory in this place. Everything God said is yours. It's yours. Look at your neighbor and say, I know it. It's yours. Say, don't nobody else know it. I know it's yours. Because the Lord said it's yours. And there's no one who trumps God. No one trumps God. No one trumps God. When God said you got it, you better believe it. You got it. If nobody else can see it, you should already see yourself with it. That's how faith works. That's how faith works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God today. I thank God today. I thank God today. Listen, I, I got to get mine, so I thank God today. I thank God today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. I will celebrate. I will be excited. I will have that effervescent feeling going on in the inside. I will be happy. Tell your neighbor, say, don't get mad. Get God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's celebrate. All our first time visitors. <laughs> Celebrate our first time visitors. Now make, make eye contact with somebody next to you. How many of you got someone next to you this week that wasn't sitting beside you last week? Okay. So it's only about five people that got different people sitting beside them. Okay, the devil is a lie. Pick up all y'all stuff and go find you a whole nother seat. Go find, except for my seniors, they can sit where they are. Everybody else, you find you another seat. That seat, you ain't know how your name on it. The reason why your praise is on low, because you sit in the same seat with the same old folks, looking at the same people, and guess what? Y'all are weights to each other. So find you a seat. If you always sit in this section, go sit in this section. If you always sit in this section, go sit in this section. If you always sit in this section, sit in this section. Change places with somebody. Come on. Pick up your stuff. The devil is. Sit by somebody you don't know. Sit by somebody you don't know. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I came for a radical worship. I didn't know it was going to be this radical, though. <laughs> now we got some space up here now. These are these are blessed seats right here. Hey Amen. These are blessed seats. So if you don't mind moving up to some blessed seats. Hey Amen. Amen. Brother Young, that's your same seat, ain't it? That ain't your same. 
You were sitting in the one next to you last Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Now make eye contact with somebody and uh, take them by the hand and look them in the eye and say, good morning. Look at, she want to do her pastor. Say, good morning. Say, it's so good to be here with you today. I am so glad that you are sitting beside me. Say, did you know that everybody who sits beside me is blessed and highly favored? Say, I don't know what you went through, but you're not going through it no more. Because the God that we serve is able, and he's already done it for you. So we're going to try to keep our composure while we enjoy the blessing that God has for you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now just make eye contact with somebody across the room. Look them dead in their eyes if you can. Now I know if you wear glasses and you don't have them with you, the picture's a little blurry right now. We just look in their direction. I want you to look at them and I want you to say this. I want you to say it loud enough for them to hear it. Say, the issue, the issue is not, is not your, breakthrough. your breakthrough. It's your celebration. may be seated. <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. Say knowledge, knowledge. understanding, yeah. revelation, yeah. and determination yeah. is the key to my change. Yeah. Say knowledge, knowledge. Understanding, understanding, revelation, revelation. and determination, determination is the key to my blessing. Yeah. Amen. Say let's get this word. 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 The, the issue is not your breakthrough. That's the series that we started, but it's your celebration with your quiet self, with your, I don't want nobody to know how, what God is doing in me, so I'm just not going to say nothing self. With your, it don't take all that self. Have anybody as a kid ever got burned by fire where you touched the stove or, you know, some grease hit you or popped on you? Or maybe you're just a little bit crazy and tried to run through some fire? Have you ever noticed that fire makes you move? So if fire in the natural sense make you move, you can imagine what the Holy Ghost fire will make you do. If you ever, 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 ever catch on Holy Ghost fire, you won't be able to keep your composure. Yeah. M matter of fact, <laughs> Your family will come from miles around to watch you burn. But at the end of the day, they want to know, what is that that's going on in you? So different. Has your, uh, have you acted in such a way that everybody loves you now? Or let's put it this way, everybody can love you. Because there's some people that just, just get straight up mad what the Lord is doing. And if they have a crazy spirit in them, it really makes them uh, despise you even more so because you're allowing the Lord to use you. Now, listen, don't, that, that's not one of them situations where, you know, you snap. But that's a situation where God is really telling you that person is your assignment. 
you show them more love and as much as you can, as often as you can. Because they're not mad at you. It's spiritual warfare that they're going through. And long as you don't run away, long as you don't back up, but as long as you stand your ground in love, that fire will, if they're not careful, it'll mess around and get on them. Get on them. Any of y'all got some close friends that y'all used to get, get along with, but the Lord did something within that relationship? Anybody? Okay, praise God. That fire got on you or got on them. So, so last week we started this uh, series. The issue is not your breakthrough. It's your celebration. And uh, uh, last week, just to kind of catch you up, um, trying to finish off last week's message, uh, uh, we shared that, you know, uh, that there's some things that God can't do. As crazy as it may sound, and I know if this is your first Sunday, you like, you already grabbing at your purse, your, your wallet and all that. Just, just hold your heart. Hold up, partner. You know, this is a teaching ministry, and uh, I'm going to teach you what I'm saying. Uh, as crazy as it may sound, there are at least three things that we started on last week that God uh, cannot do. Say three things. <coughs> now, uh, quickly, uh, the three things that God simply cannot do uh, the first one is that God cannot lie. Y'all agree with that? Say, so that's one. Now, um, we shared in the scripture last week, and I can't go over the whole message because it was a blessing. And to, to be very transparent with you, uh, I really don't even know half the stuff I said because I have a little outline but the Holy Spirit does a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, that's not in my notes. And so for, it doesn't benefit my ministers to even get my notes because it looks like shorthand. They're like, well, Pastor, you said way more than that. Why I don't get the whole message? Well, you need to talk to God because he, he finishes it all. And so <clears throat> in one scripture we use, uh, we utilized last week was uh, Hebrews 6 and 13 through 20, just if you're taking notes and you want to know where, where I come up with this, that God cannot lie. Uh, there was a portion in that scripture, verse 13, I just want to read this portion. It says, uh, for example, there was God's promise to Abraham. <clears throat> Since there was no greater to swear by, God took an oath to his own name, saying, this is what God said in this passage of scripture. He said, I, certainly, I will certainly bless you and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. And one very powerful thing that God had me to elaborate on and just to, to work last week uh, in minister terms um, is the fact in the scripture, the scripture said, then Abraham waited. He waited. He waited. And uh, for, for some people, it may be 10, 12 years, some people, it may be 10, 12 days, 10, 12 months. Uh, but the key is, God's going to move when God want to move. But the even bigger key is, or the other key that accompanies that key, because you know how you put two keys together? You have your screen door key, and then you have your main door key. Well, you put them together because once you open and unlock the screen door, you want to be right in to the main door. That about anybody think like that? Am I, am I the only person like that? Okay. So the other key is once you wait it, that's the first key. The second key, you got to hear his voice and move on it. Or else you're stuck between the screen door and the main door. That's very uncomfortable, isn't it? Now, I don't see anybody who is uh, of that size who can remain in between the screen door and the main door. It wasn't meant for you to live in between the screen door and the main door. So the first key is to wait, to wait. The second key 
is once you hear God's voice, then you need to act upon his voice. Because now, if you don't, you'll still be dealing with back pain. And you have literally missed your blessing. All because you were stuck between the screen door and the main door. Now, I know that didn't sound, that sounded a little crazy to some people, but you'll get that on your way home. So, he said, Abraham waiting. So, now, uh, one other thing in, in this, it says, uh, and without any question, that oath is binding later on down in the scripture said God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure sure perfectly sure what is a promise if you can't be sure what is a promise if, if I make a promise but she can't be sure of, as to what I'm saying what is a what, what validity does that promise have? How uh, authentic? It's so weird seeing you in this section. I'm, I'm so used to your praise right there, but praise be to God. That means God gonna send us another praiser right there to replace you, you know. Amen. Because I keep looking at him like, hold on, what you doing? <laughs> so it says here, we receive the promise. Could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. God will never change his mind. That's what the scripture says. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are times whereas we have changed our mind. Even after we made us a so-called promise unto God. God, if you bless me with this job, I'll tell you, God, I'm telling you, I'm going to be in church every Sunday, every Wednesday night, God. I know I can't sing, but I'm going to get in the choir, God. And first opportunity to go to choir rehearsal, you're too tired. Then the next week, you're too tired. You have changed your mind. So, so the scripture said that he would never change his mind. Now, it says, so God has given us both a promise and his oath. It said, now these two things, these two things, God's promise and his oath, uh, are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible. Say impossible. For God to lie. I don't care who's talking to you. If God showed you something, told you something, don't let nobody uproot that seed that have been sown into your heart. Because we know that it is in when I say we, I'm talking about believers. That we know, we as believers know that it is impossible for God to lie. So, so those two unchangeable things uh, that the scripture is referring to is the will and the word of God. Now let me move on. Let me get down here. Let me get down here. Now, this is where I left off last week. Those two things are the will and the word of God. Now, God cannot and will not lie because his will and his word it's unchangeable. It's fixed. God's will and his word is unchangeable. It's fixed. Now, really, that's a point that every believer should get happy because you work so hard and so long and progressed spiritually to get to a point and to get there and God had moved it. <laughs> so his will and his word is unchangeable because it's fixed. It's fixed. Now, oh Jesus. Mm, wow, 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 wow. So, so God's will will uh, never is never going to change 
and God's word is never going to change. Heaven and earth shall pass away. That's how deep this is. Heaven and earth will pass away. God's word will remain the same. Now, now, so, so when you put them together, when you put them together, they're the strongest thing that comfort us. Now, okay, now let me see. How many people live in Missouri? Any Missouri residents in here? Okay, okay. Now, because we know that, you know, you're show me state people. So I got to show you some scriptures I didn't get to last week so I could finish this. Give me Titus uh, 1 and 2 in the King James Version. I got to help you. I have to help you. Okay. Titus 1 and 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God, you see the rest of it, that cannot what? Cannot lie. Promise before the world began. Okay. Give me John 1 and 14, King James Version. And it says, John 1 and 14, King James Version says this, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Give me John 14 and 6. John 14 and 6 puts it this way. It says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way. The what? So how can you be the truth and the lie at the same time? So he cannot lie. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Give me Numbers 23 and 19. I got to help you see this. Because I don't want anyone leaving out of this place thinking that God lied to you. Because if you're not careful, the enemy will have you believing that God has lied to you. Last week, last month, last year, five years ago. But God, you said. Now, so now you need to question if he said it to you. There's some things that we hear and God didn't necessarily say it. Oh, Jesus. Numbers 23 and 19 says like this. He said, God is not a man <laughs> that he should what? Neither the son of man that he should repent. He said, hath he said and shall he not do it? Whatever he says, he's going to do it. Whatever he says, he's going to do it. And for those of you who say, yeah, but he said it so long ago. But how have you been waiting? Have you been, you know, in a situation where you have been confident and then you get into a little moment? where you're not sure, and then you back the confident, back to not sure. Why would God come through when you're not sure? I'm going to tell you why. Because then you're not going to give him the credit. Or still I say, we're not going to give him the credit. So he said that he should repent. Had he said it, he shall not do it. Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it... And that's what the pastor's been saying. Stay safe. That's what the pastor's been saying. If God say it, he going to do it. Scripture says it right there. Had he said, had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Like, come on now. So, Jesus. So God cannot lie. And he will never lie. Why? Because he is all true. All truth. Now, 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 so look at the second thing that God cannot do. And as crazy as it may sound, God cannot remember forgiving sin. That's right. 
That sounds deep, don't it? God can't remember forgiving sin. I mean, you mean that when God forgives me, he don't remember? Let me ask you this question. Why should he? You did it. You repented. He, he healed you, forgave you. So why should he keep a catalog of what, what he done did? Why should he keep a record? Oh, Jesus. The reason why I'm saying this is because some of us right now, we keep records. And the reason why that you can't forget because you keep records. You forgive them and let it go. Let it go. God has given us the example. He's given us the example how to do it. But all this nonsense that uh, us humans say, well, you know, I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. No, you haven't forgiven. It's just, and it's damning up your blessings. They're all in your spirit. Because you won't just let it go. You can't get remarried. Because everybody in your mind is just like that other person. Just let them go. They, they controlling you and they done moved on in life. And blessed be to God, hopefully your kids don't look nothing like them because then you hate your kids for something they daddy or they mama did. You remind me of your daddy. Go outside and play. Tell somebody it's time to let it go. devil that made me mad. Okay. They don't believe me. They don't believe that God cannot remember forgiving sin. I don't know. I you know, I'm, if you just don't understand, Pastor, you wasn't there. And you don't know how it affected my family. You know, I couldn't even finish school. And I lost my job. And that car he would let me drive, he took it. Well, don't you think if he left you, he was going to take his stuff? You should have took your stuff, too. You melt them little old necklaces down and them rings you bought him. It didn't mean nothing, so melt them on down. No, I, I hear somebody, well, I can just pass them on. No, you don't give them to the next person. That's a curse. Tell my girl, this is a nice ring. I thought you might like it. And she mess around and bump into the ex, and you got her ring on. Cheek, cheek. <laughs> Give me Jeremiah 31 and 34. I got to help somebody with this. God, God cannot remember forgiving sin. Jeremiah 31 and 34. Jeremiah 31 and 34. Jeremiah 31 and 34. It says this. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for... They shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. Look right here. For I will, what? Forgive. He going to do what? Forgive. He's going to forgive their iniquity or their sin. And, look at, in addition to forgiving us, this is where we learn for all you. I'm going to forgive, but I ain't going to forget. And God said, I will remember their sin. What? No more. You can't advance until you just let it go. You got to let it go. That's the only way that it's going to become a what? TKO. So, so this verse is very clear. When God forgives people of their sins, they're gone. Quit beating yourself up. That's the other problem. People are like, Pastor, I was just, you don't understand how bad of a person I was. God, there's no in the world God could just, just let, you know, give me a pass on that. No, he didn't give you a pass. He forgave you. It's not saying 
It's not saying that he said it was okay. He forgave you. He, he's just that fair that uh, if all you did was to steal a paper clip at work, but uh, you stole time, he going to forgive both of y'all because y'all both said, God forgive me. <laughs> so now the third and last thing that God cannot do, cannot do. We clear on the first two, right? I know y'all, some of y'all was all messed up last week. Oh, Pastor, he a little out there talking about God can't do some stuff. No, that ain't right. That ain't not right. Well, I just told you two of them. So the third one is God cannot get a person out of hell once they have been cast there. He can't do it. He can't get you out of hell once you've been cast, cast there, meaning that was your sentence. Cast there, meaning you really deserve to be there. He can't get you out of hell. So why is that important? Because, listen, we don't want anyone to go to hell, but just in case if you so happen to end up in hell, God is not going to get you out of hell. Getting you out of jail is one thing, but getting you out of hell, that's a whole total different thing. God is not going to get you out of hell. Oh, that, that word right there scares people. Okay, you don't believe me. Matthew Matthew tw uh, 25 and 41. Give me Matthew 25 and 41. Matthew 25 and 41. I got to help you because I want you to be serious about your walk to ask to the, to the point where uh, nobody can shake what you believe, how you believe. And when God show it to you, you stand on it. Not squat on it. Squat on it is you don't stand on it for Sunday service and Wednesday service. That's squatting on it. Standing on it, you're going to stand on it all the time. And you're not going to be scared to let people know that, that you are a child of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, the devil will make you think that it closes doors to let people know you're a child of God. But I'm telling you right now, it opens doors to let people know that you're a child of God. Because what it says is that that person is supposed to have integrity. And everyone, everyone wants to be around someone who has integrity. Because if you have integrity, that means that I can trust you with my stuff. If you have integrity, that means that I should be able to trust you with my kids. When my kids and my grand, grandbaby come over your house, I shouldn't have to worry about no crazy spirits transferring from you to them because you're a person of integrity. <laughs> we there? Matthew 25, 41. It says, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Oh, boy. You better make sure you ain't on the left. Woo, that list. I don't think it's going to make a difference at that point, but you better just go and start begging right there and there. Just, just fall out. Yo, just let your spirit, man, just hit the floor, you know, kicking and everything. So he said, he said, then he shall say also to them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed. Man, I'm telling you, God's a bad boy. Some of y'all thinking he's soft. You see right there, he's not soft. Literally, God is not. I, I didn't listen. You don't have the word. This be able to break it down to you if you wanted him to. He don't have to. That this person sold into your life on this day when you was at the gas station. This person tried to talk to you when you went to church that one time. You was supposed to be paying attention. You was playing uh, tic tac toe or something. You had an opportunity to listen, but since you didn't listen and you start doing this, 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 and that, you on the left side. Depart from me, ye cursed why you just can't get to heaven any kind of way, any kind of how. Live any kind of way. Think any kind of way. Because guess what? It's not taking anybody. Well, I didn't lost about five members right there. They going down to the church down the way, the happy, friendly church. You know. Or the KGB church, the kinder, gentler kinder, gentler branch of religion. I'm going to tell you the truth here. And it don't only apply to you, it apply to me. I, you, don't you know I get cut first? 
before you get cut? Because when I study it to give it to you, that means if there's anything that's not right in my thoughts or whatever, I got to line up. I can't stand up here and be this, uh, uh, stand this tall on the word and, and just know that I'm all messed up. That's why you say, well, I, people have heard them. They say, well, I tell people, uh, my pastor, he talks about everything. Because this is whole man ministry. I don't want to be messed up. And then you say, I said, he never talk about adultery. Some pastors are like that. They caught up. He never talked about, you know, this, this, and that. He never talked about healing. You can, you will be glad to say, mine do. He's not scared. Okay. Depart from me. See how sad that make you feel to hear, just to, just to think that God would tell you, depart from me. That's like God saying, get out of my face. Now just imagine your parents, your mama, you didn't did something so bad that your mama tell you, get out of my face. Depart from me. <laughs> I said, <laughs> okay, get my scripture back up here. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. You see that? Into ever, everlasting, ever lasting not depart from me into a five minute flame but it says ever lasting and I believe if, if the, the man or woman boy or girl of, of, of understanding would think about that part for one second ever lasting ever lasting not ever lasting joy not everlasting happiness because you're in a cursed status. So this is what cursed people get. Everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil and his angels. Now give me verse 46 of Matthew 25. Verse 46 puts it like this. Because we're talking about God can't get you out of, out of hell once you have been cast there. And we know that based off 41, people get cast there. Now, verse 46 says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. So the everlasting fire that they are being cast into is not an everlasting party. But it's an everlasting party punishment oh God it says but the righteous mm, into life eternal so how do we know that God can't get a person out of hell once they have been there and these shall go away he just imagine God doing that. You, you wonder what it looked like for a God hander. We know God's a spirit, but in our imagination, some of these times I think like that. You know, God just, and when he speaks, it's just, you know, you can just see his voice. I think like that because when you think like that, it makes you uh, desire to get there. You, you, you know, for kids, you think about, you see the commercials and you think about riding a ride at Disney World and Disneyland someday, and then even if you don't get there as a child, but as an adult, you're going to make sure you take your kids there. Am I right? So it's the same way in the spirit. You, if you don't ever think about heaven, how can you say that you're trying to strive to get to heaven? Notice that people that think about heaven, they talk about heaven. You know, they're, they're a little bit more on point when it comes to their effort in their living and it's just not punching a ticket on Sunday you know and, the, and these type of people they, they serve with, with joy 
because it's not about me, it's not about you. They, they have a destination in mind. They have a goal that's way beyond serving your chicken and waffles. And you're like, oh, they were just so nice. They're not doing that for you, they're doing that for God. They sing so happy, they just sing it straight to me. You're the benefactor of their voice, but they're singing for God. Pastor, you didn't have to come out at 3 o'clock in the morning and, you know, just because we called you. Yes, I did, because I'm not coming out for you. I'm coming out for God. So it said, and these shall go away. It says nothing about the possibility of returning. They go away. Now, how we know they're not going to return? Because it says everlasting. So God, he's not going to bring you back. There's, there is absolutely no, oh, Jesus, no repentance at this point. You dead, you gone. Mm, Jesus. So, so the word everlasting means just what it says. Now, let me remind you, whose word are we referring to? We referring to God's word. This is not pastor. If it was just what pastor was saying, then maybe there's a little hope for you. Well, pastor says a good chance, you know, that you might get to come back. Maybe it's a point to the devil's not paying attention. You could just slip out the back door. That's not what, you ain't going to find that in the scripture. It's not there. So, the other underlying point is, if you end up there, you can't blame it on nobody else. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that was too deep. God, they kind of <laughs> kind of quiet. Nobody want to think about going to hell. Praise God. But you think about it so you don't go. Now, so, so yes, you heard, you heard right. God has limited himself in what he will do. And that includes rescuing people who have been cast into hell's lake of fire because they rejected him. They rejected him. He didn't reject them. They rejected him in life. You reject him in life, then you rejected him in death. Jesus. So, so God will not, not take lost sinners out of hell once he has cast them into hell. Mm, give me... Give me John 3 and 36. I'm almost done. Almost done. John 3 and 36. Y'all there? John 3 and 36 says, says it like this. He that believeth on the Son hath... Now let me get them smiles back on your faces. Let me get them smiles back on your faces. I just need my white suit on. Let me get them smiles back on your faces. Let me get them smiles back on your faces. It said... He that believe it, what's that dude's name? His spirit jumped in me right quick. Benny Hinn. Let me get them smiles back on your faces. He that believe it on the Son has everlasting life. That, that make you happy? Okay. All right, I'm going to spoil your, your dinner. You like All he's talking about is hell. Now he ain't even hungry. Now, <laughs> and he that believe it not, the Son shall not see life. That's fair to me. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Wow. So the issue is not your breakthrough. That's an, an excuse. That's an excuse. Now, because if God said it, if he showed you, then he should be, uh, you should be way past that which was a barrier. Say was. So once he's done it, then you shouldn't be hanging on to it, talking about it, except for if it's the minister to someone else, you need to help out of the same thing. Mm, Jesus. So, so the problem is, if you think there's still an issue, then guess what? You're going to live like it's an issue. You're going to live like it's an issue. And then people, tell, people remind you, girl, What's going on? That happened a long time ago. I thought that you was through with that. I thought you was over with that. I thought you was done with that. They are letting you know that you have not moved beyond that issue to celebration. Why would I still be acting like I'm, all, I'm uh, still up in a, a house that's on fire when I've been pulled out of the fire? 
I should be in the street celebrating that I still have my life. So, so here's the greater issue. Once God has delivered you, this is the crazy part. You don't even let nobody know. Now, and let me help you out on this part. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me help you out on this part. As believers, you don't have the right to remain silent. You don't have the right to remain silent. Ah, come, come here, brother bro Terry and uh, brother Dre. I need, I need to help them to see this. Because we all know that this is our, our resident expert, uh, Kansas, City, fine, Kansas City's finest police officer. I want you to stand here. You got, them, you got that jury with you. Now, come on, lock, lock, you know, do your thing. Tell somebody saying them are real. Now, in the in the world sense, when you hear click click, I, is this a click click that they're referring to or the other one when the door shut? Door shut. Well, this is a this one's enough to scare me. Uh, I don't even want to hear the other click click, you know. So, and just just the thought of being in the back seat and I can't even talk to you because we got glass in between us, you know. I don't want to even be in that type of car situation. <laughs> but in the world, they say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used in a court of law. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So in the, in the spirit, when, when we listen, now I know that's what they say in, with us, you know, officer and so on and so forth. When we are... Uh, in sin. This is how we are. Do yours like this. Try to do them like this. Can't do it, can you? Can't do it. And guess what? Just for just for the illustration, the person that this when he when he walked up to my car this morning. It was so perfect. The Spirit knew that. I just knew then that the illustration was going to come forward. The person that's standing beside you while you're in sin is not wearing no long white robe and all that stuff, right? All black. All black. Head to toe. All black. Darkness is beside you. And you can't even praise them if you wanted to. Even when you try to fake it, try to fake it, put them straight up. Try to fake it. It don't even look right. <laughs> Everybody in the church know it's something about your praise that just ain't right. Because we are free to worship. Everybody else is free to praise. But yours just seem like it's the same all the time. It's the same. All, when, listen, when you come back next Sunday and you ain't seeing, guess what? It looked the same. The Sunday after that, and you ain't seeing, you try to go into praise, it looks the same. You have a choreographed praise because you have been arrested by sin. Mm. I'm trying to help somebody. And because you have been arrested by sin, you really can't even put your hands on ministry like God wants you to. Can't play the instrument. You can't even urge it because. You can't do ministry. Even when you sit down, you are uncomfortable. Go on, sit down. I'm going to show them. When you in sin, go on, sit down. But now, when, now, 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 it's easy sitting down. Now, follow me. It's easy sitting down because that's what the enemy wants you to do. Now, let's try getting up. You see how you have to do all that? <laughs> it, when you are in sin, and when sin has incarcerated you, and when you are still stuck in between the screen door 
and the main door. You Listen, the enemy has intentionally done that to limit you. Because now, notice how you keep looking at them. You keep looking at that which has you bound, and your head never look up. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody in this place. But once you make up in your mind, Once you come to yourself, the scripture said, listen, that when he was in the hall pen, when he, when he considered his ways, he, guess what? He looked up. Now, there's, let me help you out here. There is power in looking up. Looking up, first and foremost, starts your celebration. I don't know anybody who celebrates looking down. Looking up starts your healing. I don't know anybody who's pro proclaiming a healing and they're looking down all the time. Looking up starts your deliverance. Because we on the outside looking in, if you're saying you're delivered but you're constantly looking down, how can we believe you? But once you look up, then guess what? Really? <laughs> well, praise be to God. So guess what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you don't ask the right person, You busy running to your mama, your neighbor, asking them to help you out, to get you out of trouble, to keep you from feeling incarcerated. Your mama, your daddy, none of them have the key to let you out. The same God that you are looking up to is the only God that can set you free. Hallelujah.